How is it now? Can you guys hear me now? Testing, testing. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I just rebooted. I don't know what the hell was wrong with it. Okay, great. Awesome. That was weird. I just cut down Google Chrome, redid it, and usually it doesn't resume an old, like, uh, ended you know, live stream like this. Usually it just, I have to create a new one. So that's pretty cool. So thank you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Learn Auto Body and Paint online training tonight. Thanks. I just ha I just got back from a dinner and um, I just got back from the dinner. So I just stayed in my suit quickly um, just because. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. How is everybody doing tonight? And before we get started quickly, um, let's, before we get started quickly, just type in the chat how many times you've been on before, if you're a first timer or if you've been on before and also where you're coming in from. Hello, hello, hello. We thought that was you in your paint suit. <laughs> Jesus, some dinner. Yeah. So yeah, I also just got back first time, Rob the Great. Awesome. Welcome. Um, I just got, I just flew, not flew back in. I drove back in. I was in Houston, um, for the past five days doing some business stuff there. Been on a bunch of times VIP from Arizona. Awesome, Don. And I do recognize your name. First time Dallas, Texas, four times, 10 plus times Southern Utah, William VIP from Calamozo. Man, the chat's coming in so quick. VIP, Hank, been around for a while, I know. Will Robertson, Will from El Paso, Texas, VIP always. I've been here before, Toronto, Edmund, VIP, Sharp Suit, thank you so much, Los Angeles. Uh, watch five videos, Miami, Southern California, VIP many times, Tampa, a bunch, John, Eric from Canada, Calgary, Eriberto, dial up. Butch, what's up, Butch? Flower Mound, Texas. You're right around the corner from me. Las Vegas, Nevada. Brian Flowers, first time Oregon. Anthony Herrera, first timer. Awesome, guys. Welcome to the show. Usually, I am not dressed in a suit. <laughs> I just got a regular shirt and baseball cap on. That's my usual attire for auto body. Um, this, is, this is different. This is dressing for success. <laughs> Kyle Shive, VIP. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for getting on tonight. Puerto Rico, awesome. Sweet. So, yeah, yeah, New Jersey. Yeah, so I'm fully dressed. I got nice dress shoes on, everything. I wish I could show you, but who cares? All right, so give me a thumbs up really quickly. Quick thumbs up. And I just wanted to say, for all the first timers, you know, I've been getting bombarded with emails um, all last week, I mean, I get hundreds of emails every single day, first time chatting, and I get a lot of people saying, I got a, I got a lot of people saying, hey, Tony, you know, I'm a first timer, I'm a newbie, I've never painted a car before, but I'm really good with my hands, I don't mind getting dirty, do it. And, you know, that's the, that's the number one wrong mistake. That's the number one wrong, the wrong mistake is, the mistake that you want to avoid is thinking that you can't do it. Because if you think that you can't do it, you're not going to do it, right? You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say that you can do it because you can, right? With the proper knowledge, with the proper step-by-step -step and guidance, right? If you find somebody that you like that, you know, teaches you the step-by-step -step process, you can do it. It's not impossible. I have two hands you know, and, and two feet just like you. You know, hopefully all of you guys have two arms. But if you don't, there are people all over the world who have missing body parts, who compete in the Special Olympics, right? So you can do it. It's how badly you want to do it and how much you want to do it and do it. So yes, you can do it if you're a complete newbie. Maybe start on something small. Start with your little motorcycle tank, you know, or start with, 
uh, a motorcycle, right? Or a small car. I like playing with small cars. I used to paint a lot of MGs. Uh, I painted a couple of Triumph Spitfires, many Mazda Miatas, many. And I just love them because they're cute little cars um, and stuff like that. So I just wanted to give that word of encouragement out to all you newbies out there saying that, you know, you can do it. All right. So let me show you a motorcycle tank that I just got in the shop here. South Central Los Angeles. Is everybody still in here? Is the chat still going? Because it kind of slowed down, and hopefully I just want to make sure that we didn't lose any connections here quickly. So type in the chat if you guys still see me, uh, if I'm still around here. Agree, start small if it gets messed up. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, let me, tur let me turn on another light for you guys, and uh, I want to show you a little, another gas tank that I got off eBay off eBay and I'm gonna make another lamp out of it. I made, I made a lamp for my Japanese father-in-law about a year and a half ago and I kinda lost some of the footage. So I'm gonna redo the project, guys, and I'm gonna show that to you on YouTube and also step-by-step -step in the VIP area. So here is the Harley Davidson motorcycle tank that I got off eBay. I got a pretty good deal on it, I think, for an authentic, you know, motorcycle tank, Harley. I think I paid, what did I pay for it? I paid like 80, the bid was 85 bucks. 85 bucks. And it has a small dent right here. Very, very small, easy. You know, take, take you 30 minutes to pull it out and shape it. Very, very small. I know we're streaming with the laptop, so you're not going to get the best, you know, video right now. So basically, you're going to do some welding pins in here, pop the dent out, and then just bondo it. We're going to grind it down to metal and, and just body work it. And we're going to sand all this out, right? Because if we're going to be painting it a whole nother color or whatever we do, it's going to be very hard to touch up around here. I mean, it can be done, but there's little scratches all around the tank anyway. You know, it's a little rough in here. So we're going to basically put a new coat of paint on it. I don't know what color. Probably do something cool and crazy with pearls and flake. Uh, maybe even do flames on it or something cool. Right? I am going to, we're not going to put this back on a motorcycle. I am going to cut this fuel ho hose off here, the fuel tip here. <clears throat> and I'm going to weld this top shut, okay? And I'm going to make a lamp out of it, a desktop lamp. It's gonna look really cool. I did one before and it came out awesome. People wanted to buy it, but you know, I, I, I just, it was a gift for my father-in-law. So we're gonna be doing that and I'm gonna be taking step-by-step -step videos for you for VIP, for the VIP guys. You guys are gonna love it. And I can't wait to show that to you. And we're gonna start that as soon as it gets warm. So I would say within the next month, or so within the next month, yeah, month to six weeks from now. Um, I'm very busy. I just got back from Houston and I actually have another business that I'm working on. I'm going to be on TV on the morning news in 12, in 12 states within the next six weeks. So I'm going to be flying a lot. Some pretty crazy shit going on. Um, I don't want to reveal everything. And also, I, I actually just came from a photo shoot for my new book, and I had some dinner. That's really why I'm dressed like this. So that's what's going on. So let's get into some quick VIP questions, uh, some quick Q&A for you guys, and um, make this a little bit more content-added, content-oriented here. All right. The tank, I paid 85 not bad for a genuine, already painted um, – okay, let's see. Okay, so I saw some – I saw some – I saw some <laughs> – let's see. 
I saw some questions about high volume, low pressure and low volume, low pressure. What was that question? If you have a small compressor, just get a low volume, low pressure spray gun. Yes, that works. I think I may take that route, Butch. Um, Let's see here. I'm just trying to look up some questions. So if you guys have any Q&A, type it in right now, and we will get to those questions. I know Butch just got his brand new air compressor here. And he liked that a lot. Takes a couple of tries. Um... VIP question. Here we go. Will. Will Robertson, I just painted my 2003 Chevy Silverado SS to jet black. How long should I wait to buff in order to get a real good shine? Um, what kind of clear did you use, Will? Tell me what kind of clear did you use? High, high, uh, high solids or low solids? If it's high solids, you know, I would wait about a week. Low solids, I would wait maybe two weeks. But it doesn't matter. As long as you give it about a week or two to cure and set up, then you should be fine with color sanding and buffing. And if you're doing black, you know, you can cut it with 2,000. You could even finalize it with 2,500 or even 3,000 if you want to put in the time. And house of color, high solids. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it all depends. You could. You could sand it and flow coat it the next day if you really want to, the next you know day or two later. But I would give it a good 10 days. Just let it cure for 10 days. Then you can color sand and buff it. And what I would also do, like I said, is go with 2,000 grit, get it flat, 1,500, 2,000 grit, get it flat. And then if you want to put in the extra time and work a little bit, wash it down with 2,500 to 3,000. This way, you'll have an easier time buffing. Well. A little maybe a little quicker quicker time buffing so that's so that's how that works um got transferred to the new site awesome tony and the course is 100 percent genuine great glad you like it what is the best way to blend pearl colors especially white well I mean, it, you know, it all depends. The, the, the idea with blending, the whole job of blending is to trick the eye, right? You want to trick the eye. So, you know, usually you could blend into, so if you're painting the full, full door, right? If the door is damaged and you're, and you're painting the door, you could blend into the quarter panel and you could blend into the front fender. Um, if you're painting the front fender, you could blend right into the door and end it. So you basically want to paint, you know, you want to paint half of the door. So say, say we're, we're painting the whole fender here, right? We're painting the whole fender is going to be new. So you're going to basically want to prep the door as well, sand it down with like 1500 grit, the whole thing, or 1200 to 1500 grit. And then when you're, when you're painting this, you're white, with your pearl and everything, you're gonna wanna just blend it into the door a little bit. Just dust it into the door, and then when you're ready for clear, you basically clear the whole panel, the door and the front fender. So that's how you really do a blend. You guys get it? So, I mean, that's it's really not as hard as it sounds, blending, you know? It's just dusting it and blending it with the wrist and, and all that, you know? It's, it's really not hard. Any low cost paint recommendation? Um, well, if you go with DuPont, if you want to go name brand, you could go DuPont and get Nason, or you, for PPG, you can get the shop line, a little cheaper brand. There's a lot of other cheaper brands out there like Omni. Omni is pretty cheap. If you go straight basic Omni, base coat, uh, pretty cheap, but I, I wouldn't go that cheap on clears. 
uh, because I, I think it's okay to go inexpensive and a little cheaper on bases, but clear coats, I like to go as high as possible. So if you can afford a $150 gallon of clear or $250 gallon of clear, you know you're getting you know pretty good stuff. If you're you know, if you're down to the $80 kits of clear, $75, $85 kits of clear, you know, they're out there. Some of the tool trucks drive around selling it. I don't know what they're using right now. But, you know, that's when you can get tinting in the clear. It'll be a little yellowish um, and just not a very good clear. You'll get a lot of dieback. You know, after two, three weeks, the, sh the beautiful shine will start to shrink up. And it'll start to look dull, but that can also be fixed by color sanding and buffing. All right, you guys getting that so far? Cool. So give me a quick thumbs up if you're liking this so far. That'd be great. Um, Spray Pro is badass cheap pro paint. When you're painting cars, do you replace the stickers, like the ones on the door jams and trunk jams, or just cover it? You could do whatever you want to do. So if you're painting a car and you have pinstriping on it or decals on it, you know, you could sand them off and just paint over it and then put new decals on top of it. Some of them you could even salvage, right? Like if you're doing like a tailgate of a truck and then you got damage on the left side here and on the right side you got a sticker that says Chevy Silverado or whatever it is, right? A lot of times you could just do your blending here, right? Make sure your sticker is clean and just clear coat the whole tailgate over the stickers and everything, right? That'll give it a finished product. So it really all depends on what you want to do. All right. Hope that helped. How do you, do I have to use separate guns for primer and base clear or can I change the tip size on the same gun? Pete, that's a great question. You can actually use the same gun for everything if you want to. You really can. And, um, you know, I think the only thing, the only time you would need a different tip size is when doing primers. When you're doing your thick 2K filler primers, polyester primers, you're going to want to do a 2.0 to a 2.2 tip size for your primer. Okay. But a 1.4 tip will be perfect for your overall base coat, clear coat, and even your primers, right? You could still shoot primers out of a 1.4 size tip, but all you have to do is reduce your primer. So you want to make your primer a little bit thinner, all right? So if you're spraying regular 2K out of a 2.0 tip, if you're using the 1.0, the 1.4 tip, you want to reduce that down 10, 20%. Okay, depending, depending. All right, if it starts spraying out dry, then you may want to reduce a little bit more, but you're just going to have to give it an extra coat or two to basically cover up that gap, right? Because you're spraying less on at, at a time. Hope that makes sense. And I do show you how to do that in VIP as well, um, because at a time I was just using one gun and I was spraying a lot with one gun. You know, sometimes, you know, I still do spray with one gun for base coat and clear coat. Primers, I usually use a thicker, uh, a bigger tip, 2.0, 2.2 size tip. Um, which shop line clear is good without breaking the bank? I don't, I forgot the number because I don't use shop line as much anymore, but I know any shop line clear is pretty much okay. You know, Tony, any updates on the store for buffers, stud welders, and your new clear coat? Thanks. Um, as of now, no updates yet. I'm super, super sorry. Uh, I just got so many things going on right now. It's ridiculous. Uh, but we are moving to the new store this month. So within the next week or two, the new store will be live with the spray guns and pretty much the same stuff that we have in our store. I'm still waiting to hear back from the clear coat company. These guys are, I think I'm going to be dealing with somebody else because they just, they don't get back to me. And I don't like that, you know. I've called them multiple times, left messages, talked to some people there, but the freaking founder, I don't know if he's too busy or what the hell the deal is. So I may, I do have somebody else um, that I'd like to work with. So I will keep you posted. It may be, it may take some time is what I'm saying, but I will keep you posted on that. Um, Richard, Richard Williams, 
Uh, VCT makes great port Bondo board. Cleans easily, razor blade. Old stock, free at local dealer. Uh, when installing, Tony Vaz says, when installing aftermarket body panels, do you go down to metal to remove the black primer that the panel comes with before spraying epoxy? No. Uh, that black primer is... There's a name for it. I totally, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. That's good primer. You want to keep that on there. Just basically scuff it with 400 and put your, you could put 2K primer right over that. It doesn't even have to be epoxy because that is like your epoxy primer. Okay, so that black primer, that's good shit. I think, is it called Ico? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I totally can't remember what the name of that primer is. Um, but that's good shit. You just want to scuff it down with 400, and you could spray your 2K right on top of it, sand it, and then put your base coat and clear coat right on top of that. Hope that helps. Um, okay, so Matt says, what should the pressure be on both the gun and the compressor if you're using a low-volume, low-pressure spray gun? Using PPG shop line base coat and PPG shop line clear coat. Okay, so it depends. The compressor, I like to have at least 80 to 90 pounds coming to my coming out of the hose from the compressor. Okay, so I got my compressor, I have my water filter and regulator, all right, which I have 85 pounds, give or take, coming out to my gun. And then on my gun, I adjust it to about 26 to 28 PSI, okay, for base coat, clear coat. Clear coat, you can go a little higher, 29 to 30 PSI. I usually stay right below 30 at 29 PSI for clear coat, okay? And your low-volume, low-pressure spray gun, you're going to want to set it up the same way. It's basically using lower volume. So you may want to take a couple of pounds off that and see how it sprays. I don't spray with low volume, low pressure as much, but all you're gonna have to do is lower your pressure down maybe two, three PSI, and that should that should be pretty good for you, all right? When using pinstriping tape, should you base coat, clear coat with one coat of the clear coat, then tape an additional, then tape, then additional coats of clear coat? Should you base coat with one coat of clear coat? Paul, I don't completely understand your question. So I'm just going to go on. Ty, how many coats of pearl would be best? Um, well, if you're blending, you got to try to match it up to, to, your, to your other panel. But pearls, you could put two coats on, two coats of pearl. It depends how much pearl you want. Yes, just like Hank said, you have to make sure you clean your gun really, 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 really well if you're going from primer to paint, especially polyester primer. All right? Guys, you liking it so far? Give me a quick thumbs up. Quick thumbs up if you're liking the content so far. Hope you guys are liking it. I'm having a problem choosing the right sandpaper grit. Okay, well, Yamin. Go here to get your free auto body and paint manual. I just put a link in the in the chat here. Why do you have to sand and buff new paint? Well, new paint, right, will give you an orange peely look most of the time after a week or so, right? You're gonna have that that texture. Okay, there's you're you are never going to get a glass finish unless you color sand it and buff it. And most show paint jobs that you see at any car show, any custom hot rod, any custom supercar, all of these cars were professionally color sanded and buffed out for a flat glass look. You don't have to color sand and buff out every paint job. You don't have to. My BMW, I didn't do that yet. And it still looks awesome. It still looks amazing. But if you want to get you know, um, amazing flat like glass finishes, then you got to color sand and buff. That's just the name of the game. 
Do you prefer wet sanding or dry sanding when cleaning up orange peel? I, I prefer both ways. I, li I like to use both ways. I think with water sanding, you save your paper. You know, you can save your paper a little longer. With dry sanding, you'll eat up your paper quicker, but you can see exactly what you're cutting and how much you're cutting. When you're wet sanding, it's a little tough to see the orange peel disappear. But once you get it to that flatness, it's going to start to look like a whale's back, you know, or an orca's back. I like to say it like that because I think that that gives people a, the best visualization of how it, it should look. It should be it sh the water should be gliding off your panels if you sanded it correctly, you know. And then you could get a chamois, dry it, and then you could see how much more you got to cut or buff or whatever. So I mean. These are the things that I cover step by step in VIP as well. So if you, if you guys are brand new and you want to check out VIP, check it out. It'll show you step by step of the bodywork process, you know, every step of the way. I take all of this into real video live in front of you where you can see exactly how to do everything. All right. Okay, I'm going to jump down. We're getting a ton of questions here. Okay, try again. Paul just said, should the pinstriping tape go on the base coat, then cover that? Or would you base coat, put one coat of clear pinstripe? No, 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 no. Pinstripe, you could pinstripe after your finished product. You don't have to clear over pinstripe, okay? E-coat, that's it, E-coat. For the black primer, the black primer on your panels is called E-coat. Thank you, Knight Rider Shop. That just slipped my mind. Okay, so back to Paul. Pinstriping. You don't have to clear over decals or pinstriping, all right? But if you want to, you can. And if, if I'm doing pinstriping, I like, and if I want to clear coat over it, what I do is do my base coat. I'll put my graphics on, right, my pinstripe on, on base coat, and then lay two or three coats of clear coat on top of it. This way you can bury it. It'll, it'll bury in. And I did that with my, uh, the YSR 50 project that I have outside that's in VIP. So I show you exactly how to do that in VIP as well. So check that out. So here's the link for the free book, guys. And here's the link to VIP if you want to check out VIP and be, be a part of the uh, VIP community. I have not used all candy clear coat. No. I don't know anything about it. I have never used it. Um, not sure. Um, you know, I'm thinking of of promoting it, but he hasn't got back to me yet. Yeah. How do you like the uh, Hank? How do you like the, that clear coat? And what are you paying for it, Hank? What are you paying for a gallon kit? Just out of curiosity. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. So, oh, one last important message for you VIP guys. All right, we got brand new VIP shirts designed and I think they look awesome. So next week, I'm gonna be sending you guys a link if you wanna purchase a VIP shirt, you'll be able to purchase a VIP shirt for about 20 bucks and I think that includes shipping. I'm not absolutely sure. It might be like $19 or so. I'm not sure what the pricing is, but you guys are going to be able to basically get VIP shirts uh, for LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. That'll be cool. You'll be supporting the community, and um, that'll be awesome. So how many of you guys in here are interested in VIP shirts? Um, next week, we are launching the new VIP shirts, so you guys can get hooked up, pick your size, and color I think mostly they're gonna be coming in black uh, because the logo it's like a gold logo and it looks really cool and that's gonna be the VIP shirts I, I hope you guys you know get pick up you know one for yourself you guys are really gonna like it I'm also gonna have one and uh, start wearing them myself so yeah they're coming out real soon I just got the graphics back the other day 
Um, they look awesome. A lot of flames. You're going to have flames. It's going to say, you know, learn auto body and paint. It's going to have VIP on it. It's going to look really, really cool. I think you guys are going to like them. So I will send you a link to that um, when they are ready uh, and for sale. So that's all I really wanted to say. Awesome. Awesome. You can see some pictures, Facebook group, 155 for a gallon plus reducer. So it's 155 for the kit. Um, I think there are a, a couple of different levels of that clear. I know there, there is a, a, a new version out that's close to 200. Yeah, exactly. That's the one I'm talking about. Um, one point five gallons. That's a lot of clear. That's a lot of clear. Okay. Um, let's see. When sanding a car down for respray, same color. Should I use four hundred grit? Yes, 400 grit, Matt, and you're all good. Matt, are you a VIP member? No, I don't think it's illegal to paint in the home garage. It depends if you have cool uh, neighbors or not. All right, so check out VIP if you guys are not VIP. And um, I hope you like the show. I will see you guys on next week. I got to get some other things done tonight. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope I answered some Q&A for you guys. I'll be on next week, Thursday, probably not in a suit like this, but my regular attire. All right, guys. I want to say thank you guys so much for getting on tonight. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, I'll send the links out for VIP shirts very, very soon within the next week or so. And um, thanks for getting on, all right? Give me a quick thumbs up before you leave. And uh, have a great night and a great weekend. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. All right, guys. Later. Later, later. Thank you so much, Don. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Hope you guys picked up some cool information tonight. Again, here are the links. You too. Have a great week. End. Laters, guys. Have a great night. Thank you. Cheers.